welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. If you're new, I welcome you all. I'm ASB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life stories with autism and mental health as well as advocating and educating to you all. So if you're into any of these, feel free to subscribe on the bottom right hand corner of the screen as well as turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of these and more that I share with you all as I journey with you guys to show my life and cetera. So as I've been away, I've been thinking about basically some more autistic related topics even though you may have seen some fun and games some more of that will be coming but for now I'm going to just bring out some autistic related topics one of which that has been of late that I was supposed to do for a group that I'm in of the autism dialogue group that I am in Facebook so I humbly apologize so these theories if you want to see more will be listed in one of the playlists of my autism help central which I'll link in the description as well so that you can get a fairer understanding about what I'm all about as an advocate and what have you. So you may be wondering what is executive function first and foremost, right? This is a term that is used widely in the autism circles or just circles of other people with complex learning disabilities that has been described in a broad array of skill sets that have to do with an individual's cognitive function of the brain. Some sources that say that up to 80% of those who are on the autism spectrum suffer from ex executive function disorder leading to some difficulties that may include managing time completing everyday tasks and making what for many of us would be simple tasks like cleaning the dishes cleaning our rooms very complicated or seemingly near impossible so for some people with autism spectrum disorders however social and communication difficulties are not just the primary issue they're socially engaged and are doing their best to communicate in their own unique way very frequently, but they are unable to respond in a timely and organised way to the requests of parents and teachers or whoever they may be communicating with. Or even to top it all off, to organise and initiate sophisticated play because they have considerable difficulty with executive function. So, again, the question you may be asking, what is executive function? This technical definition means this is the cognitive processes of the brain that helps us regulate, con control and manage our thoughts and our everyday actions. This includes planning, working, memory, attention, problem solving, verbal reasoning, inhibition, cognitive flexibility, initiation of actions and monitoring of actions. But obviously I'll have a diagram that will show a part of the brain and now just to share what that function is and where you can where it is in the brain obviously is in the frontal lobe where it is all happening of this activity of the executive functioning so what does it actually look like in real life I was reading up by a lady called Cynthia Kim of her blog musings of an SB she quotes in practice executive function is a slippery concept Sometimes it looks like responsibility, sometimes it looks like self-discipline, sometimes it looks like being a competent adult. If you have poor executive functioning, however, on the other hand, people might mistake you for being disorganized, lazy, incompetent, sloppy, or just plain not very bright. Why is this? Because executive Executive functioning encompasses so many essential areas of the daily living, as I mentioned before, of those functions in the brain, of what we do. Nearly everything we do calls on areas of the executive function, however. Cooking, cleaning, baking, parenting, work, school, self-care, and the list goes on. Another, another one I've been reading up on is the contributor, Rebecca Moyes, basically said, based on executive functioning on the website that I've got this, is saying that Executive function is deficits can be likened to an employee who works for a company when the supervisor is unorganized and inefficient. Nothing seems to go right for them. Things may get misplaced and general chaos seems to be the operational rule here. It's a lot like that for children with autism that has this autism or other form of autism spectrum disorders, however, the executive in charge of their brain is not yet effective or isn't effective and because of this planning processes may suffer. So you may be wondering, what are the aspects of the executive function? It's important to note and know that not all people with autism spectrum, spectrum 
disorders have these issues, just to be in mind, with all the aspects of these executive functionings. For instance, an individual might have the ability to plan, but that lack the initiation to follow through that planning stage of the plan of attack. They might be able to problem solve once in a while, and once they realise there is actually a problem while problem solving, they may not be able to verbalise the problem and actually maybe solve it. Here is a list of executive functions in the basic descriptions just to get to you guys in the know-how. So, number one is planning. As we know, planning is all about forward thinking and choosing the necessary actions to reach our goal. Deciding the right order of task of duty, assigning each task to the proper cognitive resources and establish a plan of action. Those on the spectrum can have difficulty formulating plans to get through their days and organise tasks in completable sections. Problem solving. To problem solve, an individual must identify a problem and then formulate a strategy to solve the problem. Problem solving uses almost all of their other executive functioning, including reasoning, attention to detail or just attention, planning, initiation, working memory and monitoring. Depending on which of the executive functions the individual struggles with, that's where the problem solving chain will begin or get broken. Working memory. Individuals on the spectrum notoriously have specific memory deficits and strengths. They can seemingly remember every Jedi name, rank and serial number in all of the Star Wars movies, but have trouble remembering to eat or what day it is or what the order of steps are when brushing teeth. Working memory is ability to remember specific short term memory to, needed to execute a function of a daily task. Attention is closely tied to the functioning of the working memory. And again, those on the spectrum can show great strengths in some areas and severe challenges in many others. Individuals with autism spectrum disorders often have a keen ability to focus, but directing that focus can be challenging. If the person with Asperger's autism spectrum disorder has sensory issues, then it's possible all they will be able to focus their attention on is the sound of lights maybe buzzing around them or the smells of other people in the room, be it if it's the strong scent of their you know, perfume or sweaty people or what have you. An individual's ability to focus directly affects what they can keep in and recall from their short-term memory. Reasoning, or in other case, verbal reasoning. It's ability to understand, analyse and think critically about concepts presented in words. And then relay them back or integrate them successfully. Many of those on the spectrum struggle with verbal ac acuity. Verbal reasoning can also be hindered by social meanings that are not obvious to those with autism. Again, this will vary from person to person, be it on the autism spectrum disorder or some of those that has some learning disabilities just to remember to be on mind. Initiation is ability to start an activity, plan or task. For those with executive function and difficulties with initiation included, they may want to play a certain game, do their homework or play a musical instrument. But unless the activity is initiated by someone else, it doesn't forever happen. It has nothing to do with the desire or want. It's about lacking the function of just doing it. Inhibition is known for impulse control. The ability to have emotional, cognitive, cognitive or physical reactions that aren't acted upon in that given moment. So when a person with autism spectrum disorder starts information downloading all the names and songs of their favourite 500k pop groups, this would be a lack of cognitive impulse control. Emotional outbursts, hand flapping or stimming and help concentration if controlled and non-harmful. Some children, however, with autism spectrum disorders simply can't control their impulses sufficiently to participate in structured situations. Cognitive flexibility. In simple terms, is known for the ability to roll with punches. Those with autism are well known to need structure and predictability and change can be very challenging for some. This can also lead to rigidity of thoughts and opinions as well as schedules and routines. Some of this, like the schedule and routines especially, I have actually shared in one of my videos which I'll link in the eye bar as well as in the description below to find out more. So to check out after the video. Next one on the list is monitoring. Monitoring is normally an unconscious process that kicks in when we are on autopilot mode, doing the normal everyday tasks that are given to us. For instance, if you are walking down the street and talking to someone at the very same time, normally only a small part of our brain or your brain is engaged in walking, right? You already know how to walk, 
So the monitoring part of the brain takes over and keeps you from bumming into things while you have your chat. For someone with executive function issues, however, if they were tired or overloaded, they will suddenly have problems with their autopilot settings of theirs, of the basic activities, dropping and bumping into things, or simply not being able to pay attention in ways that could be hazardous, like walking out onto a busy street. So you may be w wondering, the next part of it is, how do you help people with autism to overcome these executive function challenges that they face? As we know, many of us with executive function is something that mo many of us will take for granted. We might have challenging areas here and there in everyday situations that maybe we aren't organised as we would like to be, or maybe we lack some initiative or self-control, but for those with us with an executive function disorder, however, even if the basics can be extremely hard. So this, this here's a few tips to, to help you with someone that you know of that maybe have have this disorder. So one of the biggest things for people to realize is just to how much of an effect that executive functioning challenges have on our day-to-day -day life, and even on a child's life day-to-day -day life. It crosses all kinds of domains from getting out of debt to getting out of bed, be getting dressed, managing school, managing our social life, managing work life, being able to prioritize between things we, we want to do and things we need to do, so on and so forth. Ms. Monos points out that like social skills for many of us with executive functioning is something that is just sort of we have to learn from. Like any other explicit behavior skills, for instance, being able to read body language, etc., etc. As I've said in one of the videos about autism and body language, which I'll put in the eye bar above me right now, as well as below me, so you can refer back to this as well at the end of the video. Ex executive functioning is something we just kind of picked up from being around people. Obviously, while we're observing people, you know, as I said before, another one is, you know, autism and not camouflaging as such, but something around the lines of it. Um, but anyway, when we have these challenges, you just don't pick it up. We need to, at this point, need to be explicitly taught and know how to do it is essential in our everyday life. The good news is children are still developing in their executive functioning, you know, skills, well into our 20s. That means that there is a lot of time to help them grow and develop these specific procedures that can help them in the areas that they might be most challenged with. So for parents to help support children with their executive functional skills, to look, one, use visual supports to teach organisation. There are many great tools and articles on how to do this on this topic. You can buy pre-made visual supports or make your very own. They can be printed on out as photographs or drawings, having some sort of visual presentation of what things go where and in what steps can be useful so that the child the child has a clear image of what they're going where they're going and what it's supposed to look like when they get there is creatively helpful when your child is getting ready to leave for the day if there's a picture of what goes on in the backpack that they can first fit to, then they will know if they pack their water lunch extra clothing etc etc two break down tasks into smaller bits and pieces. For those with executive function disorder, getting ready to leave for school in the morning can be such an overwhelming task. So if you break down the task into bits and pieces, it will become much easier. Getting up, get dressed, eat breakfast, go to the spot where your bag lives, pack the bag according to the visual aid as described in number one, is next to the bag, then shoe, then coat, etc. With one family, the child may feel confused, as an example, when his mother wanted him to clean the kitchen. He wasn't sure what that meant, so we broke it down into sections and took a picture of what each space cutting drawer sink counters looked like when it was clean the way mum wanted it to be. Three, have clear spaces where things go. Some teachers in large classes may find it really difficult with different kinds of children to organise the class structure. Basically, some of the teachers might become frustrated because the child didn't have the right designated seats. So the water bottles the kids bought every day just want, every, you know, they just want everywhere because they didn't have a space. Obviously, another one is you could make a box with a piece of tape with a picture of water bottles and then explain to the child that's where the water bottle sits. Having these in those spaces with pictures of them is your best bet for, you know, maybe having baskets for hats or caps and mitts to go, you know, even where shoes may go you know, etc, etc. It will then become second nature best of what they need to know. 
Well, don't come to the rescue. Parents often develop and modeling amazing executive functioning skills while they juggle the kids' pets jobs and each other. Those parents often stop it, step in seamlessly with their kids while they're having trouble with a skill set that is strong in the parent. Stepping in to organize your child's bag, driving them to school with endlessly forgotten lunches or homework and cleaning their room for them doesn't help children learn how to do these things for themselves. It does take more time to set up a learning process to wait and give your child a chance to do it on their own first, but ultimately the only way to work on executive functioning is to set up ways to help and then practice doing it. Five, set aside lots of time and lots of patience. You may be wondering how much time and how much patience do we need here. I'll tell you, you need extra more time and patience than you would like to take it on. For some parents and kids, this means doing it the night before. It will take longer than you think, but you should be able to have the patience. But want, you want to give them the time to do so, as much of it on their own as you can, so that they can learn for themselves. If you're really in a hurry at any point, choose a different time for the learning skills to begin Obviously, there are always opportunities and no need for extra stress if you are pressed for time. So always make sure to have the right time involved when it comes down to, you know, doing this ritual of certain tasks that I've just mentioned as a tip. Get help if you need it. Executive function development isn't always a parent's job. It can be for the sake of parents, teachers, or anybody that is working with children with autism spectrum disorders with this disorder. Um, I am not trying to advocate for parents on their own to do so. You know, just be, don't be afraid to ask for help. It's not just a parental response to make this sure the children learn the everyday skills that you want around this executive function. It's also crucial for the teachers if they're in schools that they're having that, you know, teacher interaction. That's what I'm looking for. Um... So that hopefully that in saying so that um, also f for the sake of support workers or childcare supporters, every adult that engages with that child has the responsibility for teaching those skill sets. Because a lot of these kids, they're not just implicitly picked up. Seek help from an occupational therapist if need be or other professional when you need support or to get you started is the best place to begin. It does take longer to set up processes to up a kids at the very beginning. It can be especially challenging because trying to teach something you never actually heard of or learnt is hard enough as it is but the risk for child self-esteem and ultimately their further independence will be well worth it in the end. So this quickly ends the very first part of autism and functioning. Smash the like if you like this. Comment below if you've got executive functioning and what you do with this or if you're an adult and you want to share your experiences with your child about your executive functioning. And I don't say this also just before I go, basically I'll be doing a part two obviously based on this, on how I go about it with this executive functioning and how it may help me on a day to day basis, hopefully just to give you guys a clearer understanding how I work and whatnot. For those of you maybe new or are returned visitors on my channel. And also don't forget also, as I mentioned so many times before, I've got a Patreon account at the moment and I'm trying to raise some funds to do what I have to do for my merch versus my projects for the future and hopefully maybe this year if all goes to well. So in all for the do's also I'm trying to also create merch stuff so that it's ready for also the awareness. You might see it, you might not, but I'll give you guys a heads up cost of the time once it's done and ready. And obviously it should appear on the screen where you can find some of my merch stuff anywhere that's already up there if you're interested in buying. So to speak, it'll be on the screen now. And all for the do also guys, don't forget to follow me on my social medias that will be coming through right now also. So all for the do guys, thanks for support, thanks for watching. Do what you love, love what you do. Until next time, SP signing out and I'll see you again soon. Ciao for now.